Guys, welcome back to another video, and today we're here to do a video on my retro game room. As you guys can see here, I wanted to go more in detail on the retro game room. I did do an overview of my whole entire house, because uh, my house is basically a gaming house with the way it's set up now with a lot of uh, different passions that I have for different things. Uh, and I wanted to break this one out because there's a lot of things in this room. This is the room that has the most amount of things in it. So I wanted to break it down a little bit for more of you guys and go in a little bit more into details and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and get into the video. Gaming tech, eating brekkie is the gaming tech, going for a brekkie is the gaming tech, gaming tech is the gaming tech, gaming techie. All right guys, so as usual, let's go ahead and start off with just a general overview of the room. Uh, before I go into details, so there's a lot of stuff to get into here as you can see a lot of different things in this room uh, to talk about. So the first thing I wanted to say here is that for those of you guys who have been watching me for a while the last couple of years, I was really excited to basically get into this. And um, one of the things that I always liked about this room is that it was uh, it was obviously always supposed to be a retro game room. The only issue was is that I used to have my old uh, regular office PC down here, uh, which was actually in this corner. Uh, this was my old desk that I used to use. And I never liked it because it was the only thing in this room that wasn't retro. And it, it was my new PC that I used for like VR and stuff like that. So I was always, you know, kind of annoyed by it. Um, and finally, I was able to you know, move that upstairs. I have my own office upstairs, which I've shown you guys in different in a different video already. Check it out on the channel if you haven't. I love my office and the way it turned out, which let me move that office upstairs. And now this room is literally all retro. And you guys will see as we go through this that everything in this room, I can now call this a retro game room for different reasons. And we'll go through everything like I talked about. But I just wanted to start off letting you guys know that, that I'm super excited to finally be able to call this a retro room and not feel like something is out of place anymore in here. So, Without further ado, let's go ahead and start in the corner of the doorway here. So this is my retro PC area. So as you guys can see here, I kind of made this feel like I was, you know, a kid again, where I have a bunch of different retro things that kind of remind me when I sit here. Uh, I have my Nickelodeon chair right here, as you guys can see. Um, nice little orange chair to kind of reminisce about that. And then when I sit here, I have everything that I remember as a kid. So if we take a seat here, for example, and we go through some of these things. We got my CRT monitor right here, one of the best CRT monitors from back in the day. Uh, we got my old school keyboard, Yahoo mouse pad. Uh, this is a Windows, this is a PC that was built with all new parts that resemble a Windows 98 machine. So all the parts were new when I got this a couple of years ago. And this is Windows 98. Technically it also has XP in it, but I use it as Windows 98. Uh, and DOS. That's essentially what this PC is for. We got the retro speakers sitting right here as well. These are the two speakers that work with this machine. Uh, we have the mouse um, that I also have, uh, which fell in the back here. There's the retro mouse. Um, so we got that sitting right there. We got the old school iPod sitting over here. We got some floppy disks sitting over here. HP iPad, uh, if you guys remember that. We got the Microsoft Sidewinders uh, controllers that are sitting over there. And then of course, a bunch of games uh, from back in the day, Unreal Tournament and Command and Conquer Red Alert 2 were some of my childhood games. Uh, where in the world is Carmen Sandiego uh, sitting right here. Another one classic that I used to play in school all the time. Uh, and then over here, uh, some more games, as you can see right here. And then right here on top is all the Windows XP games. And where I play my Windows XP games is this Alienware computer sitting right here. So this is an Alienware computer that has a top of the line graphics card. I can't remember what it is right now uh, that's in there, but it plays everything fully maxed out and everything like that. Have uh, um, some headphones from back in the day, some Corsair headphones that, um, you know, a lot of people had back in the day. Uh, but this Alienware machine, uh, Alienware is a machine that I always wanted as a kid, never actually had one. I did have a Dell machine instead, not like the Alienware, but just a regular Dell XPS machine. Um, but I really wanted an Alienware, even though I didn't have it as a kid, but it's something I wanted. Super happy to have it now. And that plays all my Windows XP machine, uh, all my Windows XP games. So you got all the Windows 98 games kind of sitting right here. And then up above, you got all the Windows XP games. You can see the giant shrine right here. We got some toys sitting over there, like the hit clips and tech and the tech deck, Tamagotchis and yo-yos, and then some of my favorite standouts like Quake sitting over there in Half-Life 2 that are sitting up there, Doom, Far Cry, Fear, Crisis, um, all that kinds of stuff. And then if you lean over here to the left, the idea was, and I, this desk is not as big as the one that I used to have when I was a kid, 
Uh, so theoretically, there would be more room to spread this stuff out. But the idea was is that I wanted to sit at this desk while playing games and still reminisce about things that I had on my desk back in the day. And some of those things were either from the 90s or the 2000s. And I'm talking about things like the Sabico that's sitting right there. Uh, we're talking about the Nickelodeon telephone sitting over there in the corner. We got the 90s, or sorry, the 90-day AOL risk-free trial. We got my Sony CD player that I definitely had as a kid back then. Uh, this is the exact model that I had. We got the Vetrex sitting in this corner. Uh, we got the Video Now player from the 2000s, something that I also had when I was a kid. We got, um, you know, just different things like that. Like I, when I look over, I kind of reminisce and, and remember things about the 90s. We got a cassette player sitting right here in front. More CD-ROMs right here. Uh, from usually, most of these, I think, are XP and Windows 90. I don't know which one is more, but either way. We got an AOL AIM, uh, you know, sticker right here in the corner because we all remember AIM on here. Um, Sidewinder controller uh, that we all remember from, from uh, Microsoft and stuff like that. And these speakers that you see right here, these Logitech speakers that I have one here, one here, and one in the middle. I also have two on the, that I usually hook up right above my head. Uh, so it's surround sound. They're sitting uh, down there for the moment because I don't use them all the time. And I use that when I use my Windows XP machine. So I have that true surround sound uh, with the sound card and everything that really blasts everything like it was in the, you know, back then in the 2000s and the 90s. So super happy. And then, of course, I have this right here on the side. I used to always, I don't know if you guys did this as, a, as kids, but I used to always have like my favorite celebrities that I had crushes on back in the day. So I have some of them here like Topanga and Mandy Moore and you know Britney Spears and stuff like that sitting on the wall because again that's what I had on my wall back then um so really really cool and these are some other standouts like Leisure Suit Larry the Lucas Archives one Half-Life the Adrenaline Pack and, and Diablo and stuff like that so this is a really nostalgic area when I sit here uh yes my desk was bigger before and I had most of this stuff a little bit more spread out um so this is more like confined uh but still this is all the stuff that I used to have as a kid and uh, super happy with it. Moving right along here on this side of the wall is my retro game. So obviously you guys can see I'm a big retro fan as well. When it comes to video games, I started with the Atari uh, that I had and then I moved over to the Super Nintendo and all that kinds of stuff. I didn't have every system growing up, but I do have a lot of the systems now that I always wanted. Like I never was a Sega person when I was a kid. Never, I, I played Sega Dreamcast at a friend's house, which was the only experience I had with Sega. Uh, but I do have all those systems now. So let's talk about some of this. I usually try to have a shelf where basically I have the standout games that I have in my collection, whether they're the most rare, or the most expensive, or my favorite games, depending on the scenario. Uh, but that's kind of what I have here. So we can start here with the Virtual Boy collection. We got Mario Tennis and Mario Clash sitting right there. We got Vetrex sitting right here. Uh, we got the Atari collection here in Medieval Mayhem. Great game. Uh, and then we got a, like a cart with a bunch of games on it. Uh, we got the Intellivision sitting over here. We got Burger Time and Safe Cracker on the Intellivision there uh, with some accessories there in front. And then, of course, we got my NES collection over here. We got Yoshi sitting back there. Uh, some, some more, you know, Amiibos and, and figures and stuff like that kind of hiding out in the front. We got the original three Mario Brother games sitting right there, of course, in the corner. We got some standout in the boxes back there like Baseball Stars, Tecmo Bowl, uh, turtles and stuff like that. Uh, moving here, we got The Legend of Zelda there in the corner. Um, Kirby's Adventure sitting back there in the box. Uh, some odd collectibles from like Nintendo uh, from back in the day, like these Mario Party playing cards that we have right there. Uh, the Kirby's uh, Anniversary sitting back there. Um, so moving along down here, we got the Sega Genesis collection on these two shelves. So, obviously, the front ones are all the standouts, like Gunstar Heroes, Contra Hard Cops, Hard Corps, I should say, the original three Sonic games we have there, Road Rash, and then we got NHL 94, love NHL, uh, Mutant League Hockey sitting over there, we got Streets of Rage, Super Mario Bros. Now, all these collections are not completely done, um, you know, I still want to get Streets of Rage 3, for example, um, so there, there's definitely games that I haven't finished this collection, but I don't think any collection in my house is finished where i'm like hey i have every single game i ever wanted um i think they're all in good places where i have a lot of the games from my childhood and stuff but there are some games that i'm still looking for when it comes to that stuff like uh like i said street fighter oh uh, sorry street rage 3 is one of the ones that comes up immediately here in the middle i i have glass shelves for all like the systems and stuff like that as you guys will see so this is my nintendo shelf a bunch of different things on here we have like a nintendo world uh statue when i just went over there to california uh, we got the Game & Watch sitting back there. We got the Pokemon Mini console that I've done a video on before. Uh, Super Mario Serial sitting back there. 
Um, here on this shelf, a bunch of different stuff as well. A couple of things from Nintendo World again. We got that famous statue there uh, from back in the day that Nintendo used to offer on their website, which was awesome. The Super Mario Show. We got the Thank You Mario Notebook. We got the last and first issue of Nintendo Power sitting back there. So that's the original first issue and the last issue back there. Um, so that's super cool. Uh, this is now the Zelda shelf sitting over here. So Zelda shelf has a bunch of collectibles as well. Uh, like the Majora's Mask 3D. We got some statues sitting back there. The Legend of Zelda like guidebook over there in the corner. Then I got a Pokemon shelf. Uh, obviously you see a 2DS back there. You got the original Game Boy Pokemon edition sitting over there. The Pokemon Pikachu. Uh, the giant Pikachu sitting over there. The original Game Boy Color games uh, that I have. Uh, that I definitely remember from my childhood. Those those are iconic. And uh, then we just got a mishmash of stuff of, that I didn't know where to put. So we got the Luigi's Mansion like statue sitting over there in the corner. 25th anniversary. The Super Mario World uh, um, watch that I got. And Metroid and, and just a bunch of random stuff. The shelf's not really well organized because I don't know what to do with that stuff. Uh, but it's all sitting there as you can see. Next shelf over here is the 3DO sitting over here in the corner. Nothing too special there. We got the uh, Gex, if that's how that's pronounced. Uh, we got the 32X sitting right there with OutRun and NBA Jam. Uh, we got the Master System over there. Sensible World of Soccer is really fun there. We got the Sega CD. Um, NHL 94 is on there as well. I think that's the best version of NHL 94 that you can technically play. And then we got my Saturn games here. Uh, great collection of Saturn games. Saturn games are really expensive. We got Bo Saturn Bomberman, uh, Three Dirty Dwarves, Garden Heroes, and Panzer Dragoon. So some good games on there. And then, of course, we have my Super Nintendo collection. A lot of these games actually I owned when I was a kid. And these are still the original ones because I never sold them or got rid of them. I unfortunately never had any of the boxes uh, because for whatever reason I threw them out as a kid. But at least I have the original games for most of these. You got you know Donkey Kong Country is there. Street Fighter, Turtles in Time, uh, you know, in the box right there is a heavy hitter. Um, we got F-Zero sitting back there, Kirby's Avalanche, um, you know, NBA Jam, uh, Sunset Riders, Zelda, Super Mario World, all the classics on the Super Nintendo all sitting there uh, ready to play. And then we got the N64 section here. Uh, got all the Mario Party boxes sitting over here. Uh, which is great. All, a lot, all of these have labels because I wanted to be able to put this on a shelf and be able to see exactly what game it is without having to take everything out. So these all have labels on them, as you can see, uh, for all the games that I currently own. Heavy hitters like Pokemon Stadium 1 and 2, Mario Golf, Super Mario 64, Zelda, Conker's Bad Fur Day, Banjo-Kazooie, uh, all those heavy hitters. And then my PlayStation collection, which is pretty big. Um, you know, a lot of heavy hitters on here as well. Some of the standouts that you guys are looking at there is Poi Poi, the Resident Evil series, Crash Bandicoot, Marvel vs. Capcom, Silhouette Mirage, uh, Castlevania Symphony of the Night, 2 on 2 Open Ice Challenge is a great game, uh, the Twisted Metal series, um, Metal Gear Solid is sitting back there uh, hiding a little bit. So some great games on there as well. Moving here, right here is my Dreamcast collection, and I love the Dreamcast, never had it as a kid, but love that I have it now. A lot of heavy hitters on here. This is my most uh, prized uh, collection. Uh, it's, I think it's the one that's actually worth the most. Actually, GameCube could rival it, too. It's usually a battle between those two with how GameCube games have gone up in price. Heavy Metal, uh, Cannon Spike, um, I forget the name of that, uh, Banjo, uh, Ban Banjo, I think that's how that game is pronounced. Uh, Sonic Adventure, Power Stone 1 and 2, Marvel vs. Capcom, Sonic Rush, Star Wars Jedi Power, Some of the Amigos, Zombie Revenge, uh, Shamu. Uh, you got some heavy hitters there in the back if you guys can see them, like Street Fighter, Third Strike, Bomberman, Sonic Adventure, Marvel vs. Capcom Clash, um, you know, uh, Mark of the Wolves, uh, some great games on the Dreamcast uh, there. And then here is the GameCube. The GameCube games have gotten really expensive nowadays. We got a lot of heavy hitters on here as well. Strikers, Coliseum. We got all the Disney sports games on here. Basketball being the most expensive one. Disney sports basketball, Disney football, Disney soccer is there. Disney skateboarding is there. Uh, Ultimate Muscle. Oh, we got Zelda Twilight Princess over here. Uh, the Pokemon games and a bunch of, you know, every, I think, I think GameCube might be in a good place where it might be the only one that I'm at, like, you know, missing something that I really want. Um, but, um, yeah, a lot of great games on here as well. And then we have the, uh, Game Boy section. So this is a mishmash of the original Game Boy and Game Boy Advance on this shelf. So you can see things like Pokemon, the trading card game there, 
Uh, we got a WarioWare Inc. We got all my Game Boys sitting right here, like my original one, kind of on stands here and everything like that. Then my Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Advance SP, the Micro sitting right here as well. Uh, so some really good stuff. We got the uh, Sega Genesis, or sorry, the um, Sega Game Gear sitting back here as well, as you can see. And just a bunch of different games on here. We got the NES version of the Game Boy box sitting up there. Uh, we got the Neo Geo Pocket sitting right here as well. And then this shelf is my uh, DS, my Nintendo DS shelf. As you can see, a bunch of different DSs from the beginning. The original DS, DS Lite, um, you know, all the different ones. We got the 3DS sitting right here as well. I love the 3DS. You guys know I love the 3D nature of games. So we got DS and 3DS on here. Uh, heavy hitters on here, Doc, uh, Donkey Kong Journey, Zombie Barbecue, SBK, Bomberman 2, Metroid Prime Hunters are good games. Uh, and then my 3DS collection right there as well. Moving on to the next shelf is my PSP and PS Vita. As you can see, got all the PSP versions that I had. And you got the OLED model sitting right there, the regular models, the original PSP and the PSP Go right there. A lot of good games on here on the PSP, like the Power Stone Collection, like Hammer and Hero, Grand Theft Auto, Vice City Stories, Persona, Chinatown Wars, great games. We got some, uh, also some movie discs here, like Hannah Montana and Spider-Man and stuff like that. We got my PS Vita collection, like Ratchet and Clank Trilogy, uh, and Freedom War sitting right there. Great games on there as well. Over here, we got the Nintendo Wii, Wipe Out the Game, uh, Super Mario Bros. Wii, Donkey Kong Kingdom, uh, Mario Galaxy 1 and 2, Link Bo Cross Training, Excite Bike, um, a lot of great games on the Wii, the Metroid Prime Trilogy Collector's Edition is there in the corner as well, as long as, of course, Wii Sports. And then coming over here is my Sega glass shelf, as we break this up here, uh, we got the Sonic stuff sitting there on the top, uh, you know, some of the Sonic games, the Sonic movies, Sonic Transformed, one of my favorite, you know, Sonic games, um, so just a couple of things on there. And then the first shelf is all Sonic related. I'm trying to get out of the light so I don't block all the light for you guys as we're going through the shelf. Because the lighting in this room is a little weird. But we've got the Retro Gamer Sonic Special Edition. we got the 30th Anniversary stuff. Uh, we got some Sonic Generation pins. Uh, you know, a bunch of different cool collectibles on there. Uh, Mario Olympic Games pin back there. The original Sonic pin sitting over here. Uh, just a lot of cool stuff uh, that I've gotten over the years. And then also here as well, we got the Genesis shelf. We got a, a Mutant League uh, hat, which is pretty cool. We got the Altered Beast pop. Uh, we got an, a guide to the Genesis back there that we had and some pins. And then over here, shelf is not completely done, but uh, this is the Saturn and Sega CD shelf. We got a Three Dirty Dwarves like um, poster back there. We got the Knights Into Dreams right there with the Game Controller original box. Sega Saturn pin right there in the front. And Sonic City and, and Christmas Nights sitting right there in the front. And then we got the Dreamcast shelf sitting right here. We got the Crazy Taxi cart. It actually does work. Uh, we got the Crazy Taxi game sitting back there along with some Dreamcast magazines, including the first issue of the Sega Dreamcast magazine, which is pretty cool to have in the collection. Moving over here, we have my PlayStation 2. We got two shelves, or actually three shelves on the PlayStation 2 here, as you can see. And these shelves, uh, some of the standouts are God of War 1 and 2, Def Jam Fight for New York is really expensive, Silent Hill 3, Ratchet and Clank series, Spyro, uh, Sly Cooper, Persona 3 and 4, we got Res, Amplitude, uh, the original Jack series, Kanamari, and Disaster. And then two shelves for that, uh, after that is my original Xbox, so we got the Halo Halo 1 and 2, we got the Star Wars Battlefront 1 and 2, we got the Guy game, can't forget about that game. Uh, Grand Theft Auto Vice City, uh, Stubbs the Zombie, Conquer of Reloaded, uh, Outrun 2006, Coast to Coast, a bunch of great games, I love the original Xbox, um, a lot of great stuff on there. And then the last shelf is just a bunch of um, art books and stuff like that that I've had over the years. So that kind of concludes uh, this shelving over here and everything I have. And then right next to that, we of course have where I actually play all those games that I just talked about. We got the nice 32 inch CRT that you can tell right now is on the N64 playing Pokemon Stadium. Uh, so we got a lot of good stuff here. So on the top of these shelves, you can see I have my VHS collection. So I got like my Pokemon 3 movies up there. We got the Pokemon uh, TV show on VHS, uh, Star Wars back there. Some of my favorites like uh, Franklin and, you know, things that I watched as a kid on VHS. Uh, we got a bunch of Mary Kate and Ashley ones sitting back there. They're kind of all just hanging up there. It's a little bit hard to show on camera, but you guys get the idea. 
And then uh, right here on the left here, uh, this is just where I keep all my controllers that, you know, everything is labeled right here that I can pull out to play any of these systems. I usually leave one controller attached to the system, but if I need more because people are coming over, that's what that's for. So again, this is a C uh, Sony uh, CRT TV uh, that does have component, which is awesome. And I use that with all the older systems. And then I also have a uh, PlayStation 3D TV. If you guys remember when Sony sold the PlayStation 3D TV, we have that sitting on the side along with a DVD VHS player as well. And then you can see all the systems that I have uh, from all the systems that we kind of just talked about. You know, we have the 3DO, the NES, the Intellivision, uh, ColecoVision is also there, uh, Sega Saturn, Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo, N64. We got the special Pikachu edition there. Uh, we got the combo there with the Sega Genesis 3 and the Sega CD, PlayStation 2. Uh, PlayStation 1 and the PlayStation Small Mini 1. Uh, we have a 360 over here as well. This is a modded one that has a bunch of games like Japanese games and stuff that you can play on here that I don't own the disc for. So that's pretty cool. Original Wii, which is also modded as well. Uh, another original Xbox here. Uh, this is the clear version. This one is modded. All my original Xboxes are modded because we love doing LAN play. Uh, so this one is modded with a 250 gig hard drive, I believe. And then we got the GameCube sitting right there, ready to go. So all of that kind of works on here. And then of course we have these little TV talkers that I've done a video on before on top of the TV that every time you hit the remote, they kind of say something and stuff, which I think is pretty cool that we have that sitting right here. That's awesome. And uh, yeah, my 3D glasses for the PlayStation are sitting here. And then right here is my retro um, arcade. This is a retro arcade racer. Uh, this has, uh, it's obviously themed to Mario Kart as you guys are looking at, which matches perfectly with the room. We got the Mario Kart at work there on the side, along with the seat and everything with the wheel. And this plays all my arcade racer, racers, whether it be Techno Parrot or N64, anything that I throw at it, that's what this is right here. This is a PC build that's running this. Has a wheel, the pedals, and all that kind of stuff, and even a butt kicker that's on the chair that vibrates when you're playing the game, so that's super cool. Uh, in the back, of course, we have some sign. Th uh, sorry, some things hanging up like the Zelda stuff and the Zelda poster, the Zelda Sword and Shield back there, which is pretty cool. We got a game room sign as well over here. Uh, we got these little um, USB things, which is cool, as you can see there. And then if I keep moving down here uh, after the arcade, this is my uh, th uh, the newer systems, but also my 3D section at the same time. So uh, this is the best 3D TV that money can buy back in the day, which I'm super happy to have as part of my collection here. Um, this is the original, um, this is the Xbox shelf that I talked about, and that is the PlayStation shelf. We got Halo and Last of Us, two of my favorite games on, on those respective platforms and stuff. And then these are all the systems that, uh, you know, you can play on an HD television as opposed to, you know, those that are on a CRT and stuff. So uh, let's talk about that first here. We got, first of all, the mini consoles over here first. NES, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, PlayStation, which is fully modded. And um, the Turbo uh, Classic, uh, sorry, Turbo Graphics uh, sitting over here. Um, and then this is, like I said, the original 3D TV. Uh, this is the, I forget the model, but this is the 4K 3D TV. So this is the one that, you know, you can watch 1080p Blu-rays in 3D, which is what my whole collection is over there. And you can actually watch them in full resolution, which is pretty cool because since it's 4K, it has the bandwidth to be able to show you the 1080p uh, movies. It is an OLED too, so that's what makes it also stand out uh, and why it's always off when I'm not using it because I don't want any burn in more than like there's already a little bit of burn in when I first bought it, but very minimal uh, because it's impossible to find these TVs. But you can see the picture quality on this is still amazing to this day as it scrolls through those pictures. It looks fantastic. Uh, but playing games on here is awesome. So we got uh, down below, we got the PSVR 1 I have hooked up on here. Uh, we have uh, the PlayStation 4, PlayStation 3. Um, uh, this is a Japanese like special edition one. We got another GameCube sitting over here. Um, we have the Star Wars special edition Xbox 360, the PlayStation 2, the Sega Dreamcast black model there. We got a Philips uh, Blu-ray player when I want to watch the 3D movies I was just talking about. We got the Wii U. And this is the original Xbox that has been fully modded out with a two terabyte hard drive with basically every game and every mod and everything you could want on an Xbox and, and everything <laughs> is insane. I've never done a video on it. I should because there's a lot of stuff on there. Um, so yeah, that's everything that's there. And then over here, like I said, my Xbox shelf, we got the controllers, uh, you know, up here, some things that I like to show off, like the Xbox sign street fighter. This is a sea of thieves controller, a Titanfall controller, two rare ones at this point. Gears of war shelf over here. We got this signed by, 
Uh, Dominic, which is cool, uh, right there. We got the Gears of War 3 signed by everyone, including Cliffy B back there. We got the statues right here. A little bit hard to see with no lighting in this corner, but uh, hopefully you guys can make out most of it. We got the Halo statue right there uh, with some books and stuff like that. And then I love this shelf here. This is my Rockstar shelf. There's a lot of cool stuff in here, like the Domino's Red, uh, Red Dead Redemption set. We got the table tennis shirt. We got Grand Theft Auto, the characters right there, a bunch of pins from the radio station, Max Payne, Bully, everything, Grand Theft Auto 3, just a couple, everything that you can think of from the Grand Theft or from Rockstar is kind of represented here from the games that I like. You got even an iFruit phone case sitting right there on the corner. And then over here we have, uh, you know, a bunch of mishmash stuff. Same idea as the other shelves where it just has things that, you know, don't fit in all the shelves that kind of relate to the Xbox, like uh, the original uh, zero day faceplate, which is really cool to have in that corner. And I'm going to turn off this TV so it's not on for nothing anymore, um, like we just talked about. And then here's the PlayStation 1. Again, a bunch of PlayStation stuff on top, like the controller, uh, Last of Us Part Two statue, uh, God of War PlayStation 3 controller. That's a rare one there as well. And then the first th shelf starts off with Naughty Dog, uh, one of my favorite, or if not my favorite, uh, you know, company that works on the new Sony that makes games. Making games like Crash Bandicoot and The Last of Us and Uncharted and stuff like that. And we got everything kind of represented on the shelf here. Uh, we even got like the hard and sought after collectible last uh, Na Naughty Dog like book that they made. I forget the exact name for it, but it goes through all their games and stuff that's sitting in the back corner there. Uh, this is the God of War shelf. Different God of War statues and, and games and pictures and stuff like that in there. And this is the Kingdom Hearts. As a huge Disney fan, who's surprised that Kingdom Hearts is one of my favorite series? Nobody. And then uh, here, definitely going to be hard to see in this corner, but this is, again, a mishmash of different things from Sony, like uh, PlayStation VR glasses. We got uh, Infamous. We got Little Big Planet stuff. We got Persona stuff. We got Killzone statues. Uh, Spider-Man uh, newspaper sitting back there. Just a bunch of different mishmashes of things in that corner. Moving right along here, this is, uh, you know, an area where I have all my controllers that relate to all the consoles I just talked about. So Nintendo, Xbox, and PlayStation, all the controllers that go with this TV are kind of sitting there. This is my Disney Infinity stuff that's sitting up here, or some of it anyway. A uh, little picture of the controllers that kind of relate to that. And then here, I really just love 3D movies, and this is my 3D movie collection uh, that I have here along with my three favorite movies in 3D. Titanic, Avatar, and Avengers. They look fantastic on this TV. So, love that. X Rocker chair sitting right here is what I use to kind of play over here. Uh, it has 5.1 surround sound, which is cool. We'll talk about the middle of the room in a little bit. And then over here is my shelf for um, Xbox stuff. And um, it's Xbox 360, uh, PlayStation 3, and Switch and stuff like that. So, if we go down here a little bit, there's definitely some standouts over here as well. We got the Spider-Man games here on the 360. We got Skyrim. NFL Blitz, The League 2, really expensive game nowadays. Ultimate Alliance, Transformed, uh, War Tech here on the Xbox 360. That's a really good game. Uh, Batman Arkham Asylum. We got Original Blur and Split Second. I love that series sitting right here. And then we have uh, PlayStation 3 Corner over here, like the Motor Storm series. I love that series. Uh, Best of PlayStation Network uh, on disc and Journey. Really good games. Wii U section, we got Wii Sports Club, Nintendo Land, and Zelda sitting right there. Uh, Xbox One and PlayStation 4, not a lot of games because I went you know, digital for most of those games, but we got The Amazing Spider-Man and Deadpool on that on disc as two standouts on there. Uh, I only have a select few of those games on there. And uh, for the Switch, I do mostly collect uh, physical copies still, so again, Pokemon Sword, uh, Odyssey, um, just a bunch of different games that are sitting in this corner from all my Switch collection on that. And then above it is just a mishmash of retro collectible things that kind of just like made sense to have here. Uh, you know, you got a Gears of War poster here that's again signed by the team, uh, which I got a long time ago at PAX with Cliffy B and stuff, which was cool. Then over here we have the iCade. I don't know how many of you guys remember the iCade, but that's really cool to have on here with, and I have a iPad that's kind of saved back in the day from ios 9 that still has things like flappy bird and stuff installed so that's really cool to be able to have that same thing with this ipod touch that's sitting right here from back in the day uh we have the connect i was a huge fan of the connect when it came out i even camped out for it when i got it and i still like it to this day which we'll talk more about in a little bit but this is kind of showcasing uh you know the connect area and then same thing with the playstation vr1 that i really loved and, and that's kind of sitting over here 
And then if we go a little bit over here, this is my retro PC corner for 3D. So I don't know how you got, how many of you guys remember, but there was something called 3D Vision back in the day. I've done a bunch of videos on this channel about it. I have a dedicated gaming PC sitting right here that is saved to that time that has a 2080 Ti in it, the highest that you can get to make most of the games compatible. And this is obviously the box that I got showing it off. We got the, the glasses and the box over here and some of the glasses sitting right here that you used to use with that thing along with the... Uh, 3D emitter and the screen that I have that uses 3D. I love 3D. You guys know this on the channel and playing 3D games and still being able to play those NVIDIA 3D Vision games back in the day. And people are still making games compatible to this day, uh, thanks to the community, because that is awesome. Um, and then over here, just a couple of random things. We got the uh, Game Boy um, over there. We got the play date sitting right there as well, which is really cool. We got a Pong Atari that I had, and there's some drawers that just have uh, miscellaneous stuff in them. Then we got some, uh, you know, Oculus Rift like thing that I used to have here for my other computer when I was fully down here, but either way. Uh, then we have a gamer sign. And again, uh, this is the old school Logitech G19 and the mouse that people had back in the day. So I love that. These speakers are fantastic. And this is a Marvel uh, chair that kind of matches with the theme of the desk. And again, there's another PC. There's so many PCs in this house. It's crazy between the arcade mods and just PCs in general. But um yeah, this is where I do a lot of the 3D games and stuff. Like I said, I love 3D gaming. Watch some of my videos if you guys want to know more about it. But it's awesome. I love 3D. I'm not sure to say it about that. And this TV over here is usually used in this gigantic space. You can see here that we have like a little area for seating and stuff like that. And these things kind of house controllers for games that are cooked up over there. DDR mat when we want to play DDR that I have hooked up to this computer and then it shows up on the screen So we play DDR on that screen sometimes we have the Xbox Connect as you can see that we were talking about before This one's ready to go pointing at us We got the PlayStation I as well that we kind of just like have plenty of room We just move this stuff out of the way if we need to and have this whole entire carpet area to play uh, You know anything that has to do with camera like 360 and the Connect and PlayStation I and things like that And we have some systems connected on here as well you can see the 360, the Xbox One, and the original Xbox, which is also modded along with their retrospective cables and stuff like that uh, with this nice size TV. And then over here we have my 90s wall. This is obviously also retro as well. Uh, a lot of different stuff on here. This will get its own dedicated video because I love talking about 90s, but you guys will see some of the stuff on here. You can see I'm a huge fan of Boy Meets World. We got VHSs here as well, like Little like Little Bear, one of the childhood shows that I grew up with at Gullah Gullah Island. Uh, Corey signed that you know man, a script that I had from Boy Meets World there, which is cool. SpongeBob, the original episodes. There's just a bunch of stuff on here. Uh, you know, to reminisce about when you were when we were all kids and stuff from the 90s and 2000s growing up. Got some board games from back then. Double Dare, Jumanji, uh, Hannah Montana stuff. We got the original Cynthia doll, Nickelodeon Snick. Who remembers Snick back then? Uh, Ninja Turtles. We got pins. We got a bunch of different stuff here from Nickelodeon, like Keenan and Kel. Uh, you know, Turtles, Rugrats, uh, just a bunch of different stuff on here. Uh, Rocco's uh, Modern Life and stuff. Uh, the Midnight Society, Flashlight sitting over here, uh, Tech Dex and Rugrats, uh, closer, Clarissa, Clarissa explains it all. We've got a nice Nickelodeon splat sign from back then. Um, and then over here, just a bunch of different stuff uh, from the 90s and 2000s. Uh, as you can see here, we got the original Furby, the Millennium Edition there. We got Scooby-Doo, we got McDonald's toys, we got Tamagotchis, we got the Talk Boy, we got the Talk Boy pen sitting over there, uh, Polly Pockets. These are the original bears uh, from back in the day. This is the first and the second one that I ever released in the original set, uh, which is cool. We got the Magic Bowl, Saved by the Bell, which is uh, signed by Slater, which is really cool, as you can see there. Hopefully you get that more filled out. We got some autographs from the Red Rangers, the original. We got autographed by Pete from, from Peter from Jumanji. This signed shirt is signed by everyone at the Kids' Choice Awards from 2000, including Amanda Bynes and Keenan and Kel, Nickelback. Uh, just so many people on that shirt. Uh, which is really cool from back in the day. Uh, and then again, a bunch of different things like magazines, like the whole a bunch of different Disney adventure magazines that when you go through them, really reminisce about everything that you remember from the 90s and 2000s, including the original Nickelodeon magazines back then, and just a bunch of different things. 
as you guys are looking at here, we got Care Bears and, and Tech Decks and SpongeBob and my original Pokemon card set, which I'm working on finishing, which is almost done. We got the Pokédex, the original two-player starter edition, uh, the Beckett Pokemon Collectors, uh, so many different things uh, to talk about on here. Uh, big turtle sitting right here in the corner. And uh, then you kind of come into the middle of this area, uh, which is the Pong, Atari Pong. I love playing Warlords and stuff with four people. This is from Arcade 1-Up. We got the Arcade 1-Up um, uh, two-player machine here as well. And I had this modded out to have a bunch of different games in it. And I even modded it with new buttons because I needed more buttons than the Miss Pac-Man originally came with. And this is modded to have a bunch of different you know, games that work in this form factor. And then, of course, we have my Devils vs. Rangers uh, Super Checks machine that I got when I first moved in. I still love this machine, even though I don't get to play it as much because you do need someone else, uh, you know, to play it with. But when friends are over, it's definitely one we love to play for sure, uh, especially with the theming to Devils vs. Rangers. I think that kind of covers everything in this room, guys. Uh, there was a lot there to dive into. I didn't want to make the video two hours long, so I kind of sped through some of it. But it definitely is more in detail than what you guys are used to seeing. Uh, with everything in this room. And I think one of the standout things that I love about this room is if you guys have been following me two or three years ago, this room was a lot more crowded. Uh, you know, I had my board game table over there, which is now in a completely separate room with a board game table on my board games, and it was tight in there. Now, when people come in here, uh, I don't know if it came across in the video, but every station, like, you can play without being in front of someone else. In other words, if someone's playing that Pong machine that's sitting right here next to me, uh, they can be playing Pong all four people and not be running into these people that are playing the Miss Pac-Man machine. And those people won't be running in to the people playing the Super Checks machine that's over here in the corner. Same thing with, you know, if they're watching a 3D movie or if they're playing the racer over there or if they're playing, you know, an N64 game and, you know, someone over here is playing a Kinect game, someone's playing a 3D game, someone's on the retro computer. So there, every station has enough room to have people in it before it used to be that like, oh, if you wanted to play the Pong machine, make sure no one's playing, you know, this other machine because a lot of things were you know, not as open. And I really love the way that this room turned out now because it's a lot more open space. I got rid of some things and moved things around out of this room. And now it's in a good place where when I have people over, they can invitingly come and play. Cause that's kind of the whole point of this area is to either enjoy the nostalgia or play it and touch it and do whatever you want. That's why I have this stuff, not only for me, but when people come over. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, guys. Let me know what you guys think uh, down below. The only changes that I can think of doing in this room uh, anytime soon is I, I keep going back and forth if I want to redo this 90s wall area and kind of buy shelves instead of everything being, you know, some stuff being on the floor because it has to go on the floor uh, and, and up against the wall like you guys saw and maybe just getting shelves. But then I don't know how I would hang all the posters and stuff that I just showed you guys on that 90s wall if I just got a bunch of orange shelves and stuff like that. So I don't know. It's an idea that I've been tossing in my head. I don't know if I'm going to do it or not, but that's the only thing I can really think of about changing in this room. Uh, especially anytime soon. I, I don't know what else I would do in this room. I think it's in a perfect spot um, and everything is so open and I have everything I want in this room uh, to kind of explore the retro side of things. So again, this is my retro game room with everything retro that reminds me of my childhood, whether it be retro games, retro computers, retro 90s toys, retro 3D, whatever the case may be, it's all here. Super happy. Let me know your thoughts down below and thank you guys for watching. Until next time.